In the previous video, we deployed three ESXi host as nested VMs in a lab environment. So if you haven't yet watched that video or the ones that led up to that, you may want to check those out as part of this series. And in this video, what you and I get to do is to deploy our nested environment's own dedicated vCenter. So prior to doing that, we should probably lay out a plan with what IP addresses we want to use, which host is going to support it. So let's go to the drawing board. We'll create a quick plan and then we'll deploy together our nested vCenter server appliance. So let me go ahead and clean this up from our previous video and let's put a game plan together. So in our nested environment, we have these three ESXi hosts. And also going forward, if we have all the infrastructure set up and the parent physical environment all set up with the ESXi host, we can pretty much ignore that. We really don't need to go back to that too much with the exception of doing snapshots and restores of these VMs. So again, going forward, we can pretty much treat these three ESXi hosts as just being normal, as opposed to thinking of them as nested. So here's ESXi A and B and C. And currently they each have six network interface cards and those would be VMNIC 0 through 5. And their management addresses for their VM kernel adapters are .31 for ESXi-A and .32 for ESXi-B and .33. And those are all on the 192.168.1 network. And we verified in our previous video that we have connectivity as we connected to each of them from our management computer right here. So again, going forward for all intents and purposes, we're just going to presume or feel like these are just normal ESXi hosts. And they each have 64 gigabytes of RAM. They each have two data stores. They each have the six network interface cards, the VM NICs. They each have 16 CPUs, which have been enabled for virtualization. And that's where we are right now. So as far as having a dedicated vCenter environment just for these three hosts, we need to decide where we're going to place it. And here's what I recommend doing. Let's go ahead and deploy vCenter and let's deploy it on ESXi C. And so for the vCenter, the vCenter server appliance that we'll be deploying, as far as IP addressing, let's use ESXi C as the host supporting this VM. And let's also, for an IP address for management for the vCenter server appliance, let's go ahead and use .35. And that will also be on this 192.168.1 network. Now, the benefit of using all these addresses on that same network address space is that we can reach all of these nested VMs right here from our management computer. Effectively, everything's local as far as the IP addressing is concerned. So VLAN 1, 192.168.1 for all the management of ESXi-A and B and C and the vCenter server appliances. Now, one of the questions that might come up is, why don't we just use the vCenter that's running on ESXi-6? And we could. We could use that vCenter server appliance that we have deployed earlier, but that's really for the management and the working of the parent or physical environment. So if we want the ability to truly do snapshots and restorations of just our lab environment, that's one of the benefits of placing the vCenter server for our nested lab environment separately on one of these servers. Now, another option is we could also place that vCenter server appliance as another VM running here on this native host. So to deploy our vCenter server over here on ESXIC, it's going to be very similar to the process we use to deploy vCenter in our physical environment as well. So as far as the game plan, our target will be deploying it to ESXIC at the IP address of .33. The IP address we're going to use for the vCenter server appliance itself will be .35. And for the single sign-on domain for this nested VM, let's use vSphere.nested. And that way it'll just remind us when we're logged into this vSphere environment about which vSphere we're working with. Are we dealing with the one down here, managing our single physical host, or are we dealing with and logging into the nested vSphere environment with vCenter at .35, which has a different single sign-on domain? So with that in mind, let's go to our management computer right here. We'll mount the ISO image for the vCenter server appliance, and we'll deploy a new image of vCenter over here as a VM on host ESXIC. So here is my local computer. I have mounted the ISO image for the vCenter server appliance. Because I'm running it from Windows, we'll go to the vcsa-ui-installer folder. We'll select Win32, and we'll double click right here on installer.exe to kick off the install process. So then we'll click on Install. We'll go ahead and click on Next. We'll accept the terms of the license agreement. Click on Next. And the host that we're going to put this on is host C, which is at the IP address of 192.168.1.33. And the username, so we can actually deploy the vCenter server appliance on that host. The user there that has the permissions is the root user, so we'll supply root. And then the root user's password we set up on ESXIC. 
So we'll supply that and we'll click on next and we'll know here in a moment if that's correct. We'll click on yes and then we'll name this. I'm gonna go ahead and call this VCSA dash nested just for grins. That way when we see it, we'll know exactly what it is. And I'm gonna set the root password for that vCenter server. And then I'll confirm the password and then we'll click on next. I'm gonna go ahead and choose small as far as the deployment size and then click on next. And on ESXIC, we have two data stores. I'm gonna go ahead and choose the first one. That's ESXIC DS-1. And very important, I'm going to choose thin disk mode. So I'm not chewing up on the actual physical host. I'm not chewing up a lot of disk storage that's not actually being used. Then we'll click on next to continue. As far as network connectivity, it's gonna use the default standard switch VM network port group, and that'll be fine initially. We can move that around later once we have vCenter all up and running. And for its IP address, we wanna use 192.168.1. Let me look at my notes, it's gonna be 35, and that's a 24-bit mask. So we'll put that in, and the default gateway is my home office default gateway, which is 192.168.1.1. Now, this is gonna be important also because if we wanna do updates or have vCenter go out and check for updates, we want it to have the ability to reach the internet. And then for a DNS server, I'm gonna supply 8.8.8.8, and then we'll use the default ports for HTTP and HTTPS. We'll click on next. We'll confirm the details here. That all looks good, including thin provisioning, and we'll click on finish. So that's now in the process of deploying our nested vCenter server appliance over on ESXIC, and this first stage will take about 20 to 40 minutes. And then once it's done, we'll resume the video and we'll pick up with stage two, to put the final touches on our vCenter in our nested environment. All right, so install stage one is done. We'll click on continue and then we'll go on to stage two. So we'll click on next. Let's go ahead and synchronize with an NTP server. We'll go ahead and use that and we'll also enable SSH and click on next. All right, and for our single sign-on domain based on our plan, let's call it vSphere.nested and we'll set up the password for the administrator. Then we'll confirm that password and then click on next. We'll say no to the CEIP and we'll click on next. We'll confirm our details are right, including the IP address of .35 looks good and we'll click on finish. And it's warning us we won't be able to gracefully stop this in the middle, so we'll go ahead and click on OK. And this part should take another 15 to 45 minutes as well, so we'll let that go for a while. And when it's done, we'll pick back up in the video. All right, and it is done. So we'll click on close, then we'll log on to vCenter in the nested environment just to verify that it works. So we'll open up a browser to 192.168.1.35. We'll click advanced and proceed. It has a self-signed certificate. And I failed to put in slash UI at the end, so we can get there from here just by clicking launch vSphere client right there. And that'll go to that same IP address with a slash UI for the vSphere client interface. And then we'll log in here as administrator at vSphere.nested. I'll supply the password and we'll click login. All right, and we are in. So I'll go ahead and apply some licenses. Let's go to manage your licenses. We could also get to that same place by going to the hamburger menu and then to administration and then clicking on licenses right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and once again, I'm gonna plug in my license information I got as part of VMUG Advantage for both VMware ESXi and also for the vCenter. So I'll click on add, plug those both in. And with those configured, we'll go to assets. And with the vCenter server system selected, we'll go ahead and click on our vCenter, click on assign license, choose the respective vCenter license that we just deployed, click on okay, and do a very similar treatment for hosts. So we'll go to hosts. So we haven't yet added ESXi A, B, and C to be managed, but once we do, we come back here to host and we could apply the hypervisor licenses for EXI to those managed hosts. In fact, since we're here and we're talking about it, let's go add those hosts right now. So we'll go back to our inventory view. We'll go back to the host and clusters view. And here's our vCenter. Let's right click and let's create a new data center. And we'll call this nested DC for nested data center. Click on OK. And let's also create a cluster in that data center. So we'll right click on the nested data center click on new cluster, and let's call this nested cluster. Then we'll click on next. And as far as the image, we'll go ahead and use the latest and greatest image available and click on next and finish. And it is in the process of creating that cluster for us right now. So here under running tasks, it is in the process of creating that for us. And when it's done, we'll bring in our three ESXi hosts. All right, and it is done. We'll say skip the quick start regarding that cluster. And let's bring in our host. So let's right click and click on add hosts. 
And let's go ahead and bring in our first one. Now, I don't have DNS set up, so I'm going to go ahead and use their IP addresses. So the first one, ESXIA, is at 192.168.1.31. And the username is root. And the password is the password I set up for root on that server. And then we'll click on add host. And let's bring in 192.168.1.32. And that is ESXIB. And I'm going to say, please use the same credentials on all hosts because the password is the same for root on all of them. And then we add one more. And that'd be ESXIC at 192.168.1.33. And with those three in mind, let's click on next. So we'll say yes to those three hosts. Click on OK. And then we have one host with a warning, and that warning is because it is running the vCenter server. So I think it will let us still do it. We'll find out here in a moment. We'll click on next and next and finish. And away it goes, bringing those three ESXi hosts in. All right, it brought them in. I'm also going to change my preferences for my administrator account. So we'll click right here on my preferences and say for the inventory view, please don't show any VMs in that view. And we'll click on save. And so if I want to see VMs, I'll go over to the VMs and templates view right there. And there is our data center. And here is our vCenter. And I'm also going to make a folder right here just for convenience. So I'll click here on the nested data center, click on new folder from the drop down, click on new VM and template folder. And I'm going to call this vCenter VM, click on OK. And then I'm going to have just that one VM in that folder by dragging and dropping. And there it is. Fantastic. So the next thing I'd like to do in our nested environment here is I would love to go ahead and update everything. So let's do that next in the next video. I'll see you there in just a moment.